Traders, welcome back to another Relentless Recap. Guys, as you're tuning in, hit that thumbs up. And if you're a new viewer, consider subscribing to the channel. So today we'll be talking about how we made just under $1,900 trading ticker symbols WORX and TGL. These two stocks were the ones today that was able to get us up nicely. So uh, before we jump into it, uh, I do want to quickly mention the disclaimer, right? Uh, let's make sure to mention and talk about the risks of trading. Guys, if you didn't know, I'm going to enlighten you. Day trading is a very difficult field. They say that 9 out of 10 traders fail and that day trading is very rigorous. And so what that means for us as newer traders, as traders who've been around but are, who are not quite as consistent as we would like to be, uh, we need to utilize small share size. We need to utilize the paper trading simulators. That way, as we're going through the learning curve, we are giving ourselves the best longevity, all right? It makes a lot of sense to go slow first, build experience, and then become competent before we increase our risk. With that being said, remember that the live streams and recaps are never a reason to try and copy trade what I'm doing. The strategy takes time to learn months, more commonly years, right? Trying to just copy blindly is ludicrous. Lastly, remember, I do not invest for my subscribers. What that means is that I'll never message you first. I will never ask for personal information or money. I will never entertain conversations about copy trading, mirror trading. I will never send you a screenshot of my p and I do not do any options trading. So stay safe out there. A lot of fake accounts and impersonators. So in this recap, we're going to address a couple things, right? How we found the stocks we traded today. Uh, some of the patterns and edges that I was utilizing to be able to capitalize and get green. And we'll talk about my risk management approach as well. So, of course, Momo Pro, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, now you do. Momo Pro is how I compile my watch list each and every day. Primarily, I'm filtering for uh, percentage gainer, highest to lowest, high volume, and a decent, uh, let's say relatively low float, right? Primarily below 50 million, ideally below 25, below 10 is great. But it's important to mention that there are outliers from time to time. We'll get a high float stock that does well. But yeah, I, I, you know, if we look at the list here, TGL is, is up here. I believe WORX might have sold off, so it's not quite up on the list anymore. Uh, but yeah, we had some decent opportunities today. Um, you know, a lot of these stocks were all right. So let's move on here to the uh patterns let's look at the charts just for some context w o r x we had a nice move yesterday and this thing was holding up its key levels right and so i was keeping it on watch because if we could have gotten over yesterday's high then there would have been a chance that we could continue higher and it was again holding up its key levels so that was important for me and seeing that, you know, into the open, we're pushing up, right? The small red to green, uh, this quick, you know, consolidation right here. And then the higher push was pretty good for me to see. Now, I was a little late to this one. There was another stock in uh, TGL that I was looking at early. So I didn't get to, you know, get here from the very start. But with well, that being said, we were still able to see some opportunities. I think I I think I was really able to get green around 10.06. Now, if, if I was on time, let's show the five minutes some love. Let's zoom in here as well. If I was on time, potential opportunities that I could have been looking at uh, would have been, you know, this red to green breakout here, right? Right down here as we're getting up to make the new high. That did result into a nice big green candle. We then traded in this range with a high point of 67 and a low point of 38. So high 30s, low 40s, potential dip trades in this zone. And, you know, can we get over the highs? Eventually it did. From there, we pushed up to 80. And then we pulled back to lows around 65, which held up nicely. These zones are again right here. And then a big move to 92. And then it grinded up to four. From there, pulled back. Low of 72. Steep pullback here, but then sweet red to green. One minute candle making a new high over 90. And then to 410. But I've, I've missed the bulk of this watching the other stock. So, you know, it sold off. It, it does this impressive. I thought it was on the backside here. It does this impressive red to green. We start to get this beautiful flag. 
the flag does ultimately make the new high but then rejects i would have wanted this to be a bigger green candle that continued up but it rejected sold off and then gave the move that we should have probably had right here sometimes these stocks they do their, their own thing and it's why i like to stay reactive like regardless of if my bias is changing in the moment if the stock is giving me the opportunity and and you know potentially inciting that it can go up higher in my favor i want to be back in and that's what happened here it pulled back it, it pulled back gave the move up dipped ripped ripped up nicely here and then dipped a little and then ripped up again and that was a nice move from there we consolidated and unfortunately we didn't get a, a new high we started getting lower highs over time and then sold off i was hoping we could have had the breakout in this area here but it pulled back and sold off so we can look over some archives and then uh we'll move on So, and TGL, you know, we'll come back to that one, but WORX is mentioned, you know, we're slightly red to start, but once we start to get this, this big red to green here, back over four, this is where, you know, we really were able to capitalize again around 10.06 area. Over 4.10, which I believe initially we had had some resistance. I started to watch over this level here. Let's come back. We'll let it play. Started to watch over this, this area. And this thing started to take off, man. I mean, look at that. All the way up to 25, 30. I, I should have already been in. So I'm going to take... I'm gonna, what was that? 18? I'm going to take right there. It jumps all the way to 40. This is end, end up being a nice trade. But I could have been a little bit more aggressive to already be in uh, over 410. That was a missed opportunity. Uh, I'm going to try for some trades in this range again for the break over 40. As, it, as it's continuing to look aggressive. But this is where we're going to get our first decent trade. And then I, and I thought I had more size than, that, than this. I'm surprised. I, I look like I was trading pretty soft here, right? 2,500, 1,000. And I think maybe because of the time we were, we were still struggling. Uh, but let me fast forward a little bit here. Let's see. I want to skip ahead to one of these bigger trades that came. There's a pretty nice trade. Okay, so at this point, I sized up a little bit more which looks about right. We started having lows around 15. And so I, I was looking to buy the dip here and ride the move back up. You know, getting a couple smaller trades in there. And then I believe we're going to hit a bigger trade pretty soon. So it sells off. It does bounce back up right here, I believe. Or was it here? Let's see. Or was this the beginning of the backside? Okay, we got back to, to 27. I want to say there was one trade that I caught with size. Maybe I'm mistaking. I thought, yeah, I'm probably mistaking. I thought I had caught one trade with size, and maybe I'm thinking that break over um, 10, but I wasn't in on this particular trade. But yeah, I mean, we did pretty well, though, in this, in this range right here with this, you know, coming, coming down and bouncing over and over. So... Let's see. It's going to dip back down here and I'm going to get back in. Let's see. 30 by 35. 30 by 35. 29 by 33. It's going to dip back down and I'm going to be long. Right here. Coming down. 19, 20. It's not as low as I would have wanted there. And see, okay, in this particular area, I'm going to miss that one. That went from 20 to 30, just like that, 10 cents. And I hesitated there. I, sh I could have been in, but I, I, I wanted to see it a little lower. And it kept consolidating. And the other stock, I think, did something very similar. So there's 21 by 29, but notice the spread, right? I'm going to attempt for 19, but it fluctuates and the ass jumps to 26. I get the fill on the ass. This was a miserable trade. I'm going to sell it scratch right here. Or for a small loss. Sometimes it's a little disappointing. And I sold that right there. I'm like, yeah, let me just get out. 
It's going to come down again, though. Let's, let's skip ahead. Here we go. 17. I believe we're going to even see like 12 at one point right here. And so I'm going to I'm going to jump back in once it does. Maybe I might skip ahead a little more for time. Let's see. 21. 19. 18. I'm going to get long somewhere here. So this is me buying for that buying. And OK, this is a good place to mention how I'm looking to manage risk. So we had a low of, of 15 or let's say a low of 12, a low of 19. I'm buying right into this zone. I'm not looking at it as one price. One price point. I'm not doing that. I'm looking at it more as a zone. And hey, if this thing wants to come back and bounce into this area, I want to be in. So I'm going to jump in here and I'm telling myself if it breaks down the lower side of the zone, I want to cut it. And I might even cut it before then if I think too much selling is coming in on the tape. Right. So if it's not immediately going up in my favor, I can cut it even just because of that. If I want to manage my risk extremely tight. So worst case scenario, this flushes down to like four. I lose like 15 cents or maybe it flushes down more. Let's just say it flushes, whatever it flushes to. I want to stop out as quickly as I can. I want to cut the trade as quickly as I can. I don't want to hold it. I don't want to be in there holding longer as it's going lower. Right here, I have a reasons to believe it should go back up. If it's not going up, I want to be out. Even if it takes too long to bounce, I can be out here too. All those are good enough reasons for me to be out. So, okay, once I start to see 24, okay, okay, 27, you know, I'm going to sell some up here and try to lock something in. But I really wanted to get that bigger push. And you can see it's back to 15. And I'm going to cut it flat right here just in case it flushes all the way out because sometimes that does happen. But once it starts to hold up again, I think I might jump back in, right? If I feel safe about the entry here, I'll jump back in. And I should have been back in there. I don't know why I wasn't. So these are areas for opportunity and improvement, right? Being a little quicker to get back in. Let's skip ahead again. Let's see. So I took a trade. Yeah, I should have been back in at 14 after it held up again. So 26 is not bad. But also, and I, did I skip it? What did I do? Jeez. 26 is not bad, but ultimately it's, it's also not necessary if I could have been in sooner, you know? But anyhow, from there is where we got backside. We hope we really wanted to see the move over 450, but from here we started selling off. I could have done better, you know, I, I could have really done better, but sometimes that's, that's just how it is, you know, TRUG starting off here, up small green, and then. And I, I think TGL actually was really the other one that I, TGL, man, this, this was a good one, but the issue, the issue I had with this one was that the, the pullbacks were so quick. I didn't have a chance to really get in with any sort of size. It, it was pretty spready. I was trying to avoid market orders because I didn't want to get the higher fills on the ask. So I was looking to place a lot of limit orders in, into these key areas, you know, similar to what we just saw on the other stock. But it was bouncing up so quickly, didn't get the chance to get in most of the times. And you know, I'd say missed out on like at least $1,000 worth of gains. Sometimes that's just how it goes. But I don't want to frustrate myself if I don't get the fills because ultimately it's a part of the deal. Not getting filled is a part of the deal. I can't get filled with a limit order every single time I try to place one. So, you know, I try to accept this stuff so that I, I, I stay locked in, stay dialed in and not get derailed or tilted all right uh i mean but that, that was pretty much the day right um for me primarily i do my best when when stocks are up trending and usually stocks never go straight up or straight down there's usually some sort of move up and then and it's probably better for me to use my drawing tool there's there's a, mo a move straight uh a move up and then a consolidation right so like this a move up consolidation move up and right here we wanted to see a consolidation for another move up but it ended up breaking down and then this is where you can start to get the indicator for the backside right instead of getting that w and higher this one here is like the reverse we're getting an m of that that christmas tree pattern right you can literally um draw out like a christmas tree here right goes up comes down all right to the depths to the depths yeah but anyhow it's, um 
that was TGL. Uh, and uh, of course, WORX, very similar, right? In terms of the move up, consolidation, right? The move up, consolidation, the move up, small pullback, the move up, bigger pullback, the move up. And then we started reversing here, but then it ranks and repeats. The move up, consolidation, move up, but then rejection. But then the move up, consolidation. And now we wanted to get the move up again. But instead, move down. Now, for me, once I start to see this continuous lower high behavior here, this is where I say, hey, I'm out of here. I don't want to be here for this downtrend move for the rest of the day. And that was it, guys. Uh, as usual, you can check out those links down below. If you want to get involved with Momo Pro, you guys can utilize coupon code RELENTLESS for 25% off for six months. Other than that, feel free to check out the course link and or the link for the Discord. If you're looking to get involved with the chat room, you know, some people, they, they are looking forward to having a good community. Guys, Relentless Trading is the place to be when it comes down to having a, a nice space uh, with like-minded people. Um, and, you know, we're all here together looking to network, trade, uh, and have a good time. So check it out. Other than that, if you do want to get started with education when it comes to this uh faster pace trading right this hyper scalping trading you guys can check out the course link down below um you know i don't think that there's a more transparent trader than myself that's doing this uh so yeah feel free to check it out just know that we don't guarantee success we can't right it's very difficult even for the mentors trading is hard and it's one of those things that we we give out everything and we help as best as we can, but ultimately it's so difficult that it's possible that you still don't make it, you know? So keep that in mind. Uh, but you know, ultimately for me as an individual, I, I'm trading because you know, there's a chance, right? And that's all I've needed coming up from the slums, from the ghettos, from the hood. All I've needed is a chance. And so that's why I'm here every day is to give myself a chance at greatness. I've already mentioned this a long time ago that I'm not chasing money. I'm not chasing girls, none of that. I'm chasing greatness. I'm looking to be the best version of myself. And the market is a great place for me to be challenged in that way every day. All right. So stay safe, stay green. It's been Relentless Trader, your favorite YouTuber. And I am, of course, signing out. Bright and early again tomorrow at 9.15 a.m. Deuces.